So, a quick explainer. If I say Tai Chi, what do you think of? You see, Tai Chi is actually so much more than just the martial art itself. A German friend of mine once told me that Tai Chi originally comes from Korea. Well, of course it's part of their flag after all. But I couldn't help notice that in China these Tai Chi symbols are also everywhere. Now as someone with a bit of a thirst for knowledge, I looked a little deeper and I discovered something rather fascinating. In August of 1882, two ministers of the Joseon dynasty, that's the last one which ended in 1910 in Korea, travelled to Japan for talks. Now at that time the Joseon dynasty had no flag. What do we do, they said. We can't just show up for talks without a flag. So after some discussion about meaningful symbols of the day, they settled on the Zhou Yi from the Tao Jing, or the Book of Changes, a very seminal text in ancient China. The Zhou Yi, they agreed, was full of meaning and represented well their nation. So they painted the Tai Chi flag and, on their return, were commended and lauded by their government leaders. A year passed and the Li dynasty proclaimed it as their official flag and was used right up until 1948, at which point Korea as we know it was founded. And yes, the Tai Chi Tu retained its national flag. So here's a question for you. What else happened in 1882? Well, the birth of American President Roosevelt, for one. The great Charles Darwin departed this mortal coil, sadly, and Einstein celebrated his third birthday. Cute little scientist. So where does the Taiji Tu originate from? Chinese folklore would have it that the Taiji Tu appeared in the primitive days of man, where myth and reality were interwoven. This vase appears to have the Taiji Tu on its base, right up until the Western Zhou Dynasty, that's about a thousand years BC. There are examples of bronzeware bearing the Taiji Tu on their bases. The Southern Song Dynasty created this, the Yixian Tian Tu, a sort of roadmap for divination. It's really similar to the Taiji Tu Ba Gua diagram as used by Tai Chi practitioners. Today's Taiji Tu is, however, simpler. That doesn't mean it is simple though, entirely the opposite. The depth of meaning contained in this design could be said to encompass the universe, all contained therein, and its origins. That's a pretty efficient summing up when you think about it. Heaven and earth, night and day, man and woman. In the eyes of the Chinese, the pursuit of harmony in all things is a pursuit of the highest order. Only when there is balance may there be harmony. Taoism incorporates this thought in this way. Dao sheng yi, yi sheng er, er sheng san, san sheng wan wu. Now one way of understanding this is firstly not to take the numbers literally. It's a way of stating that from the Tao, or the One, there is a natural order which involves pairing and creation, ultimately leading to all things. And it represents the unity of opposites in China's philosophy, that idea of harmony again. Not only does the Korean flag hold the Taiji Tu, the Mongolian flag and its Soyombo symbol representing the sun, moon, earth and water, also contains a taiji tu. Apart from the taiji tu, Korean traditional costume, known as a hanbok, and Japanese characters are more examples of the influence of Chinese early cultural dissemination. Because of its place as the origin of Asia's human culture, its influence has radiated out over the millennia and pervades deeply in countless aspects of Asian culture. Comment, leave us questions, share your thoughts. Remember to hit like and subscribe if you want to show some extra love. We we'll look forward to hearing from you. And don't forget, until next time, keep it open. So, let's take another look at this Taiji Tu. Does it remind you of anything?